và em xin được mời uh, cô Inessa người đại diện của khối ngành giáo dục toàn cầu into I would like to introduce Mrs. Inessa. She is a representative of into in the US. Uh, please join in. Hello, Inessa. Hello, Hannah, and hi everyone. Nice to join the session. Lovely to have you today. So, may I just ask you to introduce yourself first of all? Thank you. Of course. Well, uh, my name is uh, Inessa. I represent INTO University Partnerships, so I'm the recruitment manager um, for INTO, and uh, I've been uh, representing INTO, in fact, for the past um, seven years. So I've been recruiting international students for the past seven years. And um, in fact, I was an international student myself, so I studied abroad, not in the US, I studied in the UK, but I still consider myself as having a, a good amount of experience to help international students who are looking to study Um, broad. So I'll be really, really happy to share my experience with you today. So do feel free to ask me any questions. Thank you. Uh, could you also please represent the uh, organization that you came from and how would you like to support students with your organization? Thank you. Of course, we'd definitely love to introduce INTO uh, to everyone. So I'm just going to briefly talk to you about who we are and what we do. So INTO is a network of universities in the US and the UK as well. We work in partnership with universities to help international students get access to education abroad. So we support applications from international students um, for undergraduate or postgraduate degree programs. And we also work with universities to create those kind of unique preparation programs that are designed for those students who don't um, yet meet the uh, university's entrance requirements for direct entry. So our undergraduate and postgraduate pathway programs are there to support international students to improve their academic English, to um, develop their subject-specific knowledge. Um, and with the, with the support also, we ensure that they are able to comfortably settle into the life in another country and that they are ready to succeed in their university degree choice as well. So we offer a wide range of courses, um, academic English, undergraduate pathway, graduate pathway, and obviously direct entry to undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. So really, depending on um, you know, what you're looking for, we have quite a, a, a big variety of courses to offer. Lovely. Thank you very much. So actually, I've got some fans from the last live stream saying that they remember you about the last live stream about the UK. And they also okay. You have a lovely hair today. Oh, thank you. I can't mm -hmm. the last live stream, but oh, thank you very much for pointing it out. And so I'm so glad you are joining the US session as well. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> lovely. Uh, may I please ask you, what is the difference between studying within the US and comparing to the UK? Right. So, of course, the, the difference between the US and the UK. So the US higher education system is a world renowned for its academic quality. We all know that and we all heard that the, they have the research output and the facilities and very huge campuses. So there are at the moment estimated more than 4000 um, uh, higher education institutions and colleges across the country in the US. So the, the US colleges also they offer flexible degree programs that give um, students um, the un unparalleled level of study and developing their um, knowledge across the diverse range of subjects. So um, undergraduate degree um, in the US typically lasts four years, while in the UK, we all know that it's three years. So um, in the US, at the beginning of their studies, the students take a variety of core subjects. And during uh, the final years, their courses become more and more specific and they're becoming more focused in their major, right? So what, uh, what is a major? Major is a focused area of study uh, that students undertake and they ultimate, uh, ultimately basically influences the qualification that they are going to graduate with. And this sort of flexibility also means that it's quite easy for students in the U.S., to do um, a sort of a double major because a lot of students in the US graduate with a, let's say, a degree in business and music or a degree in theater arts and finance. So it's, it's a possibility for you to do that in the US. So let's, uh, let's say the, the main differences, as we've just described, is the length. So in the UK, it's three years. In the US, it's four years. Then um, the second difference would be the entry requirements. So in the UK, when students apply to universities, Uh, UK universities ask for A-level or equivalent qualifications. 
right? So um, whilst in the US, in addition to the normal academic requirements, so let's say your high school graduation diploma and transcript, students also need to take SATs. So SATs are the university's entrance exams that are required to apply to um, a direct entry to university in the US. And those SATs are um, required for all the American students, but that requirement also extends to all international students as well. So no matter where you apply from, for direct entry, you would normally need to take SATs as well. So um, then uh, we also, uh, the, the difference would be the academic curriculum. So the UK offers very, very focused um, and specialized education. So let's say um, in the UK, if you start studying finance, so from year one, you will study finance and you will graduate with a degree in finance. While US, it offers a more sort of flexible and holistic education system. And then let's say, um, let's talk about the final thing. It's the assessment. So UK mainly puts um, emphasis on the final exams. Uh, while in the US, um, it, they offer a more sort of consistent evaluation. And, um, and then finally, the grading, of course. UK offers the uh, class honors uh, system, while the US offers um, cumulative GPA. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, we're getting first questions from our students, from our audience. Um, one of our Thai students, I think. What is the short and long term plan Into has in place following the circumstances of COVID-19 in the US? Of course, that is a great uh, question. So obviously COVID-19 created such an uncertainty for all the students and especially those who um, are traveling from outside the US uh, to join the programs um, with us, which are most of our students because most of our students are based uh, outside the US. So we've um, transitioned uh, all of our partner universities in the US transitioned into virtual learning as soon as um, COVID-19 um, happens, unfortunately. So all the students were taught by the same teachers and they carried on studying online as they would have studied face to face. And they all were able to progress um, as they would have progressed if they were in the center as well. So in the summer, we had um, uh, courses that were offered online. For example, we had English on, uh, online uh, language courses. And um, in the, the um, in the fall, then we had students who were joining for uh, hybrid options. So they were able to join online or if they were able to travel to the US, they were able to start face-to-face uh, -face as well. So obviously, whatever happens, our priority is our students' safety and their success during these uncertain times. And um, that's why we offer these flexible um, options and they can choose to stay on campus or face-to-face. So no matter what uh, options they go for us, we will obviously, you know, they can count on us. Uh, we, we just want to make sure that we have all the international students' um, needs um, in, in front of us. Right, lovely. Um, also, additionally, what has it been in your experience uh, working with uh, international students? What's your best memory or what you enjoy about international students? Hmm. Very good question. You know what I would say? Um, it's the joy of having someone, um, of having, you know, to, to help someone um, achieve their dreams. Um, right? When I just uh, joined um, into and I joined the international uh, sort of recruitment, um, it was especially in my first year, I was so happy. Um, to help students, uh, you know, when you see their journey, um, you know, I would help them to apply for a pathway course, let's say one of our international year one courses, and then um, they would get so excited, they would get an offer, and uh, you know, I was the one to help, I was so proud. And now, now I can see that a student, let's say four or five or six years ago, who joined international year one, they progressed to their degree, then they completed their entire degree and they've already graduated and they started employment. And I'm just so happy that I was part of that journey. And um, as I said, I feel extremely proud to, to help students like that. Lovely. Um, we've got another question from one of our uh, students. Which course is in demand in the USA? What do you think? Right. Uh, very good question. I can't single out um, a particular course just because the students that come to study in the US, they, their interest is so broad. We have students uh, applying for engineering. We have students applying for 
uh, computer science and IT. So um, it's it's really hard to talk about one particular one. Um, from uh, my own experience, with the students that I work with, um, we have a lot of students applying for um, international year one uh, courses, which is a, a pathway course that leads to um, an, an undergraduate degree. Um, particularly, the, the reason for that is because for our undergraduate pathway courses, we don't ask students to provide SATs, so they can um, apply for let's say an international one course without SATs, uh, while if you apply for direct entry, you will be most likely asked to take an um, SAT. So that's a, kind of one of the you know benefits uh, of the courses that we offer. And I do see a lot of applications um, from students for that. Right. Um, just sliding into the next question, what careers have recent graduates gone on to? Wow. Like in demand, what do you think? What, what careers? Right, we had um, accountants, we had uh, graduates working in finance, we had graduates working in IT. Um, I mean, we so far um, in, in 10 years of INTO, we had over um, 16,000 students um, uh, graduating. So it's 16,000 students studied with us. Um, and progressed and, um, you know, uh, applied for further employment. So I think we had all sorts of, um, you know, careers for where students progressed to. Um, as I said, from the arts to engineering, uh, we had students going into nursing. We, um, we had students, um, let's say, uh, doing internships and then being able to secure employment um, after that, after completing an internship, because they've shown how um, you know successful they are, they showed how committed they are, and they were able to secure an, an employment as well. So we really had a lot of you know different kinds of <laughs> students, you know, progressing to different kind of careers. Right. Um, one of the students are seen. Um, are there any discounts available for students accepting offers during this time of COVID-19? Right. Um, we have, um, rather than uh, discounts, we have scholarships. And um, in fact, we have each of our university partnership, uh, if of our university partners in the US, they, um, they offer their own um, scholarships. So, um, we have, let's say, scholarships for direct entry um, for, let's say, universities like uh, George Mason. I'm sure you will be able to see here. This is a map of the U.S. and the universities that we um, represent. So let's say George Mason um, application for scholarships um, deadline would be 15th of December. Or we also have the original scholarships available for students who apply for pathway courses. So I would say that if you have really good grades and, you know, you are ambitious and you, you know, you, you do want to do well with us as well, feel free to apply for a scholarship with us. And uh, we consider all applicants and, of course, students with, uh, you know, higher um, academic performance will be you know, more likely to be considered for a scholarship. But definitely do, um, you know, uh, submit an application for a scholarship with us. You can apply for it as soon as you receive an offer letter to study with us. Uh, once you have that, you are most than welcome to apply for a scholarship, of course. Lovely, thank you. Right, and um, next question for you. Um, what is the maximum length of time for an internship and work placements in the US after the students have graduated? And what's the difference between ITP and OTP in the US? Wow, okay, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might ask me that, in fact. Okay, right. So OTP and CPT. So, okay, let's start with OPT. Uh, it's um, the full uh, name is Optional Practical Training. So it's a program that um, temporarily allows international students with an F1 uh, visa status, which is a student visa status, in the United States to work of up to 12 months. So, and it has to be in relation to their degree, to their major study. So basically what it means, it means a one year of paid work experience after you graduate. Or if you graduate with one of the STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering, or maths, you may be able to stay and work for, for the three years instead of one year. 
So the curricular practical training, which is CPT, the short name for it, it's, um, it's a program that um, allows international students with also the F1 visa to gain practical experience. And it has to be directly related to their major, um, through, um, of, major of studies. And it has to be through the employment. Um, so basically, that could be internship, uh, core program, summer full-time work. Uh, it can be on and off campus. And CPT must be completed before graduating. So basically, the main difference between OPT and CPT is the time period in which you are eligible for this um, program. So um, OPT can be completed before or after graduation, while CPT must be completed uh, before your graduation. And the CPT employment is also a part of your major, so it may be required for you to successfully complete your major. Um, and you will be able to um, do the uh, CPT for all your course. Um, alternatively, you can also get credit for it, so get credit for your practical experience. And uh, the OPT is not really employer-specific, so it allows you to work and uh, you don't need to earn any credit for it. You will be already graduated and you will be doing your basically work experience in the US. Which is uh, explaining shortly what OPT stands for. Yeah, and CPT, up to three years for STEM graduates must be completed before graduating. Right. I've yes, got a question from one of our students, I think with the low IELTS, not particularly low. I got IELTS only 5.5. Can I study in the US university? What kind of options? Hmm. Okay. There are several options for you with the 5.5 in IELTS. So generally for direct entry uh, courses to the US, you would probably need to achieve an IELTS of um, between 6 to 6.5. That's for, uh, I assume this is for undergraduate course. Um, if you don't have that, um, there are different options for you. So normally what um, we do when we assess your application for, let's say, um, an undergraduate course in computer science and we see that you have uh, met the academic criteria but you are lacking a little bit in your English so what we normally do we offer you um, a, a short um, English language course that uh, will start prior to your degree so we will depending on how what is the gap between the um, what you have in your score and what you need to achieve, we will be able to offer you between, let's say, three, six or nine months of English, and then you will be able to start your degree. Alternatively, we also, I've mentioned briefly earlier, we have um, international year one programs, which are pathway programs. So we, um, it's specifically designed for international students um, and we help them with their language skills as well as academically. And throughout that course, you start earning uh, credits as well towards your degree. So we are able to accept students with slightly lower um, IELTS. So let's say with the IELTS of 6.0, we might offer you an accelerated pathway course, um, which would last about, let's say, six months. Or if you need slightly more, uh, then we will offer you a, a normal standard um, a two-semester pathway course that would take um, one academic year. So there are, uh, there are a lot of um, options for you to still go and study in the U.S., even if your IELTS is slightly um, lower than is required for the degree. Thank you. Hope um, Sin has gotten her answer for the question and she could be more um, confident about her 5.5 IELTS and she hopes she'll find an op best option for her. Right. Um, next question for you from Ling Ling. Um, it's um, regarding the employment. So how do U.S. universities help students secure employment and do they offer the student a training in any U.S. company? Right. Wow. Very good question. Um, right. What I would probably start um, saying is that at INTO, um, all of our universities, um, we have a dedicated um, team working on um, students' work opportunities. So um, we have a careers team that ha helps students in preparing for a job interview. We write resume and we help them. We help them write resume. Obviously, we don't write it for them, but we provide their all all the advice that they need. And we also help with motivational letters as well. We we suggest you know what they should 
put in there uh, to make them a more desirable applicant. So usually universities, they also organize career fairs. So students can have the opportunity to meet the employers and discuss their careers and internships and OPT opportunities as well. So uh, at, at Intu, our university partners, they have very good networking um, with local companies. So let's say Oregon State University in Cornwallis, they, it's a, one of my favorite examples. They have a very good uh, network, uh, networking with HP. So just because the headquarters uh, is in the same city. Right, so um, it's uh, it's in the same seat in Corvallis as the main university campus, of Oregon State. So, one hundred percent of our IT students are being uh, offered an internship there. Right, and uh, let's say St. Louis University, um, they are um, aerospace engineering programs. They have the opportunity; students have the opportunity to secure a, a, an internship or work experience at Boeing, which is. You know, if you are uh, looking to have a career in, you know, soft in, in aerospace engineering, that getting an internship at Boeing would be absolutely fantastic. Um, let's say Colorado State University, they have a very wide range of uh, engineering and IT companies. Um, Hofstra University in um, Long Island. They, they focus on a very hands-on learning experience for students and they have connections um, with loads of companies in New York City. Um, so, yes, we do try our best to help uh, students to secure, you know, internships, um, um, OPT opportunities, and then obviously further employment after they um, graduate. Lovely. Uh, the question. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I think she's probably planning to go to US uh, very time soon. Um, and I think she's going to be studying business. So just the following question. I think if you can just um, reply briefly, what can she do with uh, requirements? And, you know, so she's saying, I just graduated high school in Vietnam. And what are the requirements that I can have a chance to apply for business bachelor in the US? Right. Okay. So generally, if you apply for direct entry to study business in the US, so you would need um, to have your Vietnamese high school diploma and transcript, and it needs to be um, an official translation. So you would need to provide uh, an original language um, copy and the translation into English, which is stamped by um, an official translator. And normally universities will want to see your um, performance for the last three years. So as I mentioned, universities in the US, they don't just look at the final grade. They want to see how you performed in the last couple of years to see whether you were consistently um, getting those um, grades. So first, as I said, um, academic qualification, your Vietnamese high school diploma, then you would need um, your IELTS um, certificate or TOEFL or any other um, English language test to show your um, proficiency in English language then uh, you would need to, to provide a reference. So it uh, should be from somebody who knows you really well and knows your academic performance. So that's usually um, a, a teacher or a program manager from your high school. Then uh, obviously a personal statement where you talk about uh, why you would like to study in this particular university and why you would like to do this particular degree. And my advice is to do a really good research before you submit the personal statement, just because when universities consider you, they would like to see, uh, first of all, how much you know about the university itself and, you know, what, what is it, what sort of values do you support that university has and why would you like to be a part of that particular university for so many years? So uh, do the best research um, you can and learn uh, a lot about the degree, look at the professors that are teaching this program as well. Maybe there is something impressive that um, you notice about one of the professors and do put that in your personal statement as well. And then finally, obviously, uh, one of the most important requirements are the SATs. So you will need to take um, your SAT exam. So you will be able to take that. Uh, if you're based in Vietnam, I'm sure you will have a place where you can take your SATs there as well. So um, these are the general sort of entry requirements to, for direct entry at undergraduate business. 
Lovely. Thank you very much. I think after that, her dream might come true. It's going to go to yes. <laughs> Even though we were mentioned before about the COVID-19 circumstances, I think that's uh, still the perfect time to go to US and, you know, chasing your dream of studying abroad, with, uh, especially when US is just like a multinational, multicultural hub with um, full of international students. So you can get everyone, you know, kind of inside of uh, all the little corners in the world. Right. Now just to sum up today's live stream, um, I would like to ask the last question. What are the unique advantages that inter students have in terms of getting a part-time job or an internship? So overall, just to sum up everything that we'll be talking about today. Of course. So as I said, um, I, I think I've, I was answering somebody's questions about, um, you know, the work opportunities and internships. So we... At, at Inter, we do have um, a specific, a dedicated team, um, a, a careers team on the campus that um, help students in securing those uh, internships, uh, securing the uh, OPT, finding the suitable co-op programs as well. So uh, all the students uh, that are based on the campus, or even if they're joining it remotely, they would still have uh, their one-to-one -one meetings with their personal tutors once a week. Um, even if it's online, so they will be able to discuss, um, you know, and talk about their future aspirations and just, you know, go through what their future plans are, what sort of careers they see themselves in. And, uh, you know, as I said, the dedicated team is there to support the students in helping them find what, you know, what will basically lead them to become um, a, a successful IT consultant or, um, you know, a, a finance manager or an accountant. So we are there to help students. That's our most and foremost priority. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, could you also name any companies, any um, popular or leading companies that your students have, have been accepted to? Anything like Google or um, anything really, you know, broad and massive that our students get into? Right, so um, our students, um, hmm, yes, they were able to secure employment in some of the world's um, leading organizations. We did have students um, uh, joining Google, we had students joining Facebook, uh, we had students uh, joining HP, uh, uh, as I mentioned before as well. So, you know, th they were able to progress to the top and you know leading companies and secure employment there so we, we are there to support you on this journey and we will do our best to help you the best we can yeah thank you very much um anything which you would like to say is for the future um people future students who would like to go abroad like if they're hesitating or you know um, anything just like a good luck word <laughs> Of course, absolutely. Um, from my side, I would like to say, you know, don't hold um, off your dreams um, for any reason. If your dream is to study in the US, then just go for it. And, you know, there will be people along the way who will be helping you succeed because it's our mission and it's our job. So do go ahead and, and carry on with your plans. And of course, I know the world is really uncertain at the moment. Things change every day. We see the, the COVID cases there and there. But, you know, that's why we have all those flexible hybrid options. You can join the course online, so there is no need to delay. And you will be able to join on, on the campus face-to-face -face, um, slightly later. But, you know, it means that you will study now and you will graduate in three or four years' time so without any delay. And, um, you know, just um, get in touch uh, with us and we will, you know, help you in any way we can. <laughs> lovely. Thank you very much, Vanessa, for joining us today. We hope many of our students will get in touch with you straight away. And that was very informative. I'm happy to have you today. And um, then we uh, will be happy to see you next time in our future live streams. For our students, we'll see how the man goes. And lovely, thank you for tuning in today. Raham, I wish you a good day. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye, everyone. <laughs> see you later. Thank you. Bye now. Okay. Uh, cảm ơn mọi người đã tham gia với buổi live stream ngày hôm nay. Mong rằng uh, thông tin mà cô Inesa đã đưa ra đã rất là hiệu. Uh,
bổ ích và uh, dành cho những ai mà dành cho các bạn sinh viên mà có nhu cầu đi học ở bên Mỹ thì các bạn sẽ tìm được cho mình một giải pháp và một câu trả lời gì đó uh, bởi những cái thời điểm hiện tại. Uh, cảm ơn mọi người đã xem buổi livestream ngày hôm nay và hãy đón xem những buổi livestream hàng tuần ở uh, trên những kênh đau minh nguyễn official không một hai global không một hai vn học bổng du học định cư anh hãy like and like và share buổi livestream này để cho mọi nhiều người có thể biết tới và hẹn gặp lại mọi người một buổi livestream khác bye bye thank you very much for joining me today hope everyone enjoyed the session and hope the information was useful for everyone who is um, dreaming of it studying in the us or uk we're always here to help Uh, hope to get in touch and thank you for watching the live stream. See you next week. Bye.